everybody. What a great audience. So yeah. good to have you here. And they, they're making, unfortunately, especially in the power centers like in Washington, D.C., they're making pretty good strides uh, by silencing our voices, by going after you know, the things that are important, you know, the life issues, the marriage issues, uh, you know, the, the family issues. They, they're, they're really focused on that sort of stuff. And, you know, you, you've got deep-pocketed people. And George Soros has spent $12 billion, with a B, dollars over the last couple of decades funding maybe 187 different activities, NGOs, IGOs, uh, that promote this radical agenda. You know, I, I've debated some of his people uh, from the, you know, the old uh, Open Society Institute and Foundation, uh, promoting drug legalization, promoting, of course, abortion, promoting a host of issues. Why has the church lost its influence when it comes to society? Because the church is a part of the structure of the thrones, and there are gods behind those thrones. Mm. And the wow. church has been demonically infiltrated. You talked about the Masonic deception. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've been a pastor now yeah. <laughs> for decades, yes, you have. and I have come straight up against that demonic stronghold that has embedded itself throughout churches across America, the Masonic stronghold that's in the pulpit, that's in church leadership, that's in our seminaries, that's in the pews, is unimaginable to most folks that are sitting in churches on Sunday morning. I have been, as you said, you just for years, you've been watching this. I, I came out of law enforcement with a real calling upon my life to be a preacher slash prophet slash priest to the, to the people of God. And I've been doing that now for almost 40 years. What I, 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 I'm ashamed of myself of how naive I was. I had no idea how wicked and evil it is even in the church world. Mm -hmm. And when I have attempted to speak to it lovingly, most of the, of, the, of the attack and the vitriol and the viciousness that has come against me has been from the church world. Right. Of course. From the church world. <laughs> of course, who was it that put Jesus That's on the cross? Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It, it was the religious elite. That's but see, it. what was behind the religious elite that put Jesus on the cross? Right. Demonic influence. Because why? Because there was power there. Right. The Sanhedrin in Jesus' day had the power from where? The Roman government. Right. You don't think there were demons involved in that? <laughs> and what did all of that contrive to do? To put Jesus on the cross. Right. Yeah. And so here we are in the midst of it, blood-bought, born-again, spirit-filled Christians with the Holy Spirit giving us discernment, and we're going, oh, my gosh. Okay, but so see, if they uh, say if we love anybody, <laughs> yeah. and this is what's happened in the church, perversion. Yes. yes. It's yes. because they're saying if you love everybody, you yes. won't stop them. Yes. You won't correct them. Yes. You won't preach and the, if the you house won't is, preach against sin right. if you love people. And, if the house and is so they down. they literally love <laughs> has been corrupted. Yes. yes. I wanted to say that I'm well, for, first of all, by the way, <clears throat> Because I loved my kids, I corrected them. Because yeah. I cared That's for their right. soul, I That's cared it. for their future, right? Yeah. And if preachers care for the people that God has put with it. In fact, David Wilkerson, you, you opened this talking about him and his book, and I remember mm -hmm. years ago at a preacher's rejuvenation. One of the most anointed sermons I ever heard was him talking about how God builds up, but God also tears down. Yeah. And he talked about those, those, those churches out there that are not being good stewards. And he made the point that when you get before God someday, it is not going to matter how many people you had in your church. It's going to matter what did you do with the people that I entrusted you with, right? Yeah. That's what's going to matter. So I came by. I came by Morningside a few weeks ago. I forget now exactly why to see somebody. Uh, and I found out you weren't here, right? Where are they at? They're down there feeding people. They're giving food to those people. So the other side to this is there really is a real church. Yes. And these are not the kind of people that toot their own horn. Yes. But I want you as an audience to know that when nobody else was looking, where were they? They were feeding people. They were giving food to people who had lost everything they had. And let me tell you something. At the end of the day, Lori and Jim, 
When we are judged, it's very clear about how we're going to be judged. And then he will sit upon his throne, and the nations of the world will be gathered before him. And what does he do? He says, I was hungry, and you gave Mm -hmm. me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was sick, and I was in prison, and you came, and you visited me, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, when did we do all these things? And as much as you did it to the least of these, my little ones, you did it unto me. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord, right? And the opposite of that judgment is the same. I was hungry, but you didn't give me nothing to eat. I was without clothing, but you didn't shelter me, right? right? And he will say to those on his right hand. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And you know what's interesting about that text? Because what do they say? Lord, look. Look at all of the great things we did in your name. So he's talking to religious people, church people. But the important thing is, but I never knew you. I never, yeah, you did a lot of stuff. Yay for you. Yeah, Yeah. right. But don't look now, because where you're going is a very, very bad place, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that, that was meaningful, to come by, where's Jim and Lori? There's been a big storm, and they're down there helping people. I said, I love this so much, right? This is real Christianity, folks. It is. I loved it. And it's, and it's, it's fun doing it. Sure. I mean, it's amazing. Right. It's an adventure of a lifetime. Right. I keep talking, and the description of the last days is perilous times. In this perilous times we're in right now, What's happening, could I, I'm just going to go through today's news a little bit, just quickly. St. Louis braces for third day of protest after officer's acquittal. So that headline says that they're having a third day of protest. People are, you know, burning things. They're doing, so what's going on? They're law-breaking. And this is why. In these last days and what's going on all over, they're breaking God's laws, God's commandments is, is going on. When you, when you look at uh, the awards ceremony, the Emmys, the Emmys last, uh, last week, you see em- the Emmys and they were cursing the president of the United States. Evil is coming out of these perilous times. And then in the apocalyptic aftermath in the British Virgin Islands, torn to shreds by Irma. Place after place, the keys. Yes. It was so horrible as people trying to come back last week. They 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 couldn't they couldn't get back. They then they when they got back. There was no food. There was no, the water system still weren't working. And what was happening? People were looting Mm -hmm. and stealing from one another. And so these perilous times are coming. And and then we have three more storms, Jose, Lee, and Maria. We have North (laughs) Korea threatens to turn the United States into a sea of flames. Mm Mm-hmm. They're saying they're going to destroy us with an EMP bomb. And so they have, they, they tested a bomb a few days ago in North Korea. And it set off their sacred volcano. So this volcano is triggering what looks like to be an eruption right now. And then North Korea threatens to sink Japan, reduce the United States to ashes. In this time of perilous times, we're going to have natural events. We're going to have supernatural events. And uh, they're going to, next they plan to derail trains and poison our food. What happens if all of our food systems get poisoned? The systems we use, the 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 big companies that put the food together. That's what's coming. Iran claims that they have created the father, not the mother, the father of all bombs. And they hate America. Who built that bomb? I almost said something wrong. Who built that bomb? I mean, who put the money up to build that bomb, the father of all bombs? Who who built it? 
Who gave the money? We did. We gave the money. The United States of America did. I think it was smuggled into some kind of a big plane or Under something. Under the guise of good. We're going to help them, and they're going to be good people. Mm. <laughs> what do you think, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis? <laughs> well, the Iranian IRGC general who said that, <clears throat> you know, I, I asked an, another um, expert what his thoughts were. You know, I... Sure, they have a, a large conventional bomb. What I'm more concerned about is what they're doing behind the scenes at Parchin, which is their nuclear test site. Uh, they're building things. They won't. They refuse to allow us to go in there and to inspect those things, and even though we have the 2015 agreement uh, that ended up giving them $150 billion. Um, Iran is very hegemonic. It has every intention of occupying everything from the Afghan border to the Mediterranean. They're doing very good, thank you. Um, they have Hezbollah, that is, of course, intimidating uh, in the northern part, uh, Israel, as well as uh, working with Damascus. The Russians, of course, are in there. Uh, there may be some Ezekiel uh, implications in there. Uh, certainly, there are, there uh, are Ezekiel implications. Yeah. The, the, the Turks are, are very upset. Um, you know, I, I met with some Christians out of the Nineveh plain not long ago, and uh, they were saying, look, the, the Iranian militias are here. They're going to chase us out. You need to help us. Uh, I'm not sure we have been able to for political reasons. Um, the entire region is incredibly volatile, Pastor. Um, and the Iranians have every intention of acquiring a, uh, an arsenal, a nuclear arsenal, given the opportunity. And they are working, and they have for decades, and I'm aware of, with the North Koreans. So anything that we've seen... You know, harnessed by the North Koreans now that they've done their, their sixth test. And oh, by the way, the sixth test, uh, the commander of the strategic command in uh, Nebraska says, yeah, it probably was a hydrogen bomb. That's very serious. Uh, this guy is, I don't think he's crazy. I, he's certainly erratic. Uh, he, I believe he has a strategy. He has been cornered like a rat. He's been cornered because... Uh, one, we're in the south. We have 28,000 soldiers there. We have B-1 bombers uh, in Guam. We have you know, THAAD and Patriots. We have all sorts of capability. Uh, he feels that, you know, he wants reunification under his command, uh, but the, Ch the Chinese and the Russians, unfortunately, are not going to be as helpful as they have been in the past, even though there are black market entrepreneurs on the side doing all sorts of things. So we're getting to the point of the only deterrence that we can have is containment uh, and, to a certain degree, deterrence. Now, what that's going to lead to, I do believe, will be that I've seen a change in the Japanese mindset as well as uh, President Moon down in uh, South Korea. That's going to weaponize, radicalize a part of the world we thought was not going to be all that bad in the future. Uh, and so uh, I could see a, an amendment to the Constitution of the Japanese government uh, that General MacArthur put in place in 1947. Uh, I could see that change because I've talked to Japanese officers. I know people all over the world. And I do believe that uh, there is a stomach at this point to say, yeah, we're not going to be intimidated by the likes of the North Korean dictator, much less others in the world. So, yeah. so we have these types of issues that are taking yeah. place yeah. amongst all the domestic issues. Uh, it's a world that seems literally to be out of control. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. The